Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the 8 Minute Demo Series. Today we're going to be talking about the Query Database Object for our Palace. But this time we're live in Auckland, New Zealand. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a Tech Evangelist Solutions Architecture for the System Center suite of products. Today is all about the Query Database Object. The Query Database Object can be found in the Utilities category here on the right hand side and uh, I have some example workflows I'm going to go through that use the query database in a couple different ways. The first and one of my favorites is to be able to create and drop and create a table automatically and I put this as a setup uh, workflow so if I'm going to use this or bring this um, database example from machine to machine I'm uh, ready to go with an actual table that's used in the example itself. So if we take a look at the actual SQL in here you can see it's just a standard scripted drop table and then create table. No big deal there. And of course we want to do this in a specific database. Now for this example and the example that I'll post on the blog um, it's just using the local SQL Server and DB examples. So I'm, uh, I have a local SQL Server, so and I'm going to use this uh, DB's examples. I'm going to go ahead and create one since it doesn't exist. So I'm going to pop over to my SQL Server, just create a new database, all defaults, just for demonstration purposes, and I'm just going to hit OK. So you can see I have a DB examples database with no tables. Now, as you might expect this create file info table which is to be used for this example because we're going to add file info data into the SQL table when you could see here file name path file extension and whatnot this will of course check to see if it's there drop it and then create it so all we have to do to make this work is run it since it's one object it's simple it's gonna go ahead and reach out and everything's configured properly looks like it was successful so go ahead and check And there it is, file info. Now you could have just as easily done that through SQL Management Studio if you wanted to. But uh, I just wanted to show you that you can do anything you want with this query database object. It's not just a query databases. You could create, delete, drop, update, all those sorts of things. Let's take a look at the design. And it's exactly what you would might think based on the SQL. So no surprises there. All right. The next thing we're going to do is insert data into this table from an Opalis workflow. So we can move on to 1.0. Well, you can see 1.0 does not have very much information in it. It's basically just a trigger workflow object. We could open that up. And what you see here from the context clues that I've uh, given you, that we're going to use this object to trigger another worker object or sub workflow and pass in a directory, c colon backslash temp star. Now if we go ahead and navigate to that, we'll see here we got a bunch of different types of files, XE, bat, log, text. All of the file information from these files will be added to the SQL Server table based on the workflow. And that workflow would be here. Once again, we are using the custom start object, which is our anchor point between the trigger that we just looked at and the parameter that's being passed in to this workflow. Obviously, we're using that parameter in this get file info object. You can see everything's dynamic here. We're going to pass in the directory. It's going to read that directory and all the files. And then it's going to output information to the insert file info object, which is just a renamed query database object. And yep, you guessed it, it's an insert statement. So let's go ahead and expand that. So we're going to insert file info, file name, file path, file extension, file size, file age, and file owner. All of these things were created in that table in our first step. And of course you can do whatever you want. This is just for an example. So as everything lined up, we do file name, name and file name and path, file extension, file size, date diff on age, just to get the number of days, how, how old the file is based on the number of days and then the file owner. All of these things, let me zoom in, you can see have a single quote, single quote, and of course the publish date in between. A couple fields that do not have single quotes are the number fields because in SQL they don't require single quotes. Let's back out of that. And as you can see here, this is a simple insert statement where we're dynamically passing the data from the data bus. All right, so let's to kick this off, all we need to do is go back to the trigger 
Go ahead and hit start. Looks like that's complete. And this guy is running. Looks like he's complete as well. Successfully inserted one, two, three, four, five, six files. And there are six files here. So the information from that table should have six line items. So let's go ahead and get those. And there we have it. We have the ID that's dynamically generated, file name, file path, extension, file size, file age, and of course the owner. This information was all based on that insert statement and the dynamic data that was coming from the get file info. If we ran this again with the same things in here, of course we would get the same line items, but if we added files, they would be added and so on and so forth. So this is just an example of inserting data from a file store. Probably nothing you'd use in production, but it shows that you can insert the data dynamically from other sources. This get file info could be get ticket info from a service desk. It could be get HR info from an HR tool. It could be just about anything where you're getting information, putting it on the data bus, and then you're using it in the query database object to insert the data. Again, this is a query database object. I just renamed it insert file info. And just like our previous example where we did a create table, we can do inserts. And then in the next couple examples, we're going to do some selects. So what we have here is using the query database object, and we're doing a select. So we're going to select all these uh, ID, fi file name, file path, all that. Uh, we're going to select all of that from the table with no where clause, so there's going to be six records. We're just going to send a pop-up of the file info data, and for this example, the data coming out of the query database object is flattened. Flatten you may have seen before, it's in the Run Behavior tab of all the objects, and what we're able to do here is flatten the published data that's coming out. So if there's six lines, we could flatten it with line breaks, so it'll come as one chunk of data, or we could separate it with a delimiter of our choice, or use CSV format. This is very handy when dealing with multi-line data, and that almost always will happen when you're using a query database object. Let's see what happens when we trigger this. It'll trigger once, read all six lines, but it's only going to send a pop-up for one. And there's a the pop-up. We can see that the file info data, record count is six, and then the record data, delimited by a semicolon, is one through six, and every line gets a semicolon. Now this is the flattened data, so if you delimited this, it would be all of this information with semicolons, then your delimiter, then all the next row, delimiter, next row, next row, so on and so forth. The reason I use line breaks is because I'd like to see all the information in it for the demonstration. But if I was going to do this in production, I might want to put a delimiter and then use a bit of uh, .NET to uh, parse out the different delimiters and get into the data um, specifically, if you wanted to pass that as a blob. Now let's say you wanted to pass individual records and parse out the specific fields. Well, we have that as well. If we go here and look, run behavior, there's no flatten. Same query, but this time we're going to handle the, diff the data differently in the pop-up. Let's take a look. It's a bit busier, but as you see, we're still going to get the record count. We're going to get the full record data without breaking out or splitting from by the delimiter. And then we're going to get the specific record data split on the semicolon using the field function that's built in. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here we go. So there's going to be six pop-ups this time because we didn't flatten. But so the record count will stay the same at six. Record data delimited by a semicolon. So this is the first record. And this is it broken out using the field function. Second, day, second record, third record, fourth record, fifth record, and sixth record, we could see that we have everything, that all the information we asked for, except this time it was six different pop-ups because we did not flatten the data. Now, what are some reasons you would want to flatten the data or not flatten the data? Flatten the data is good if you're getting a bunch of information, you want to put it in, say, one ticket or one email. But if you needed to update uh, create a ticket for each record that you'd want to use the unflattened method. So anytime you want the multi-value data to and to parse that multi-value data and put it in individually, you wouldn't flatten it. But if you did want it as one blob or one chunk of data, you would use flatten. To review, we saw how to create a table using the query database object. 
We saw how to insert data using the query database object. And of course, we saw how to select data in two different ways um, using the query database object. You can use this object to update. You can use it to delete. And you can use it to drop. Any valid SQL statement should work with this object. There are a couple exceptions. The go statement does not work with this. Uh, but everything else seems to uh, work just fine. Now, this object is also available to be used with Access, ODBC, Oracle, and SQL Server. If you have an older version of this object, you may see other options here. But this is the most current version for 6.2.2. And again, Access it does not include the newer versions, 2007 or 2010. It's the older versions of Access. But anything via ODBC, um, Oracle, and SQL Server. And you, uh, the examples here, obviously, were SQL Server. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.